In today's video, I want to go over getting newer versions of software in Debian with backports. But to do that, I first want to explain some things for the uninitiated among us. Debian is known for its rock-solid stability, but it is also known for moving at an absolute glacial pace when it comes to updating its software, at least in the stable repositories. So with that being said, there are multiple branches of Debian. The stable branch, which at the time of recording, is Debian 10 Buster. There's also the testing branch, which is codenamed Bullseye. And the unstable branch, which will forever be known as SID. There's also an experimental branch, but I won't be discussing that one today. So, if you installed Debian 10 Buster when it was released a good while back now, the software versions in the standard repos were already somewhat dated because all of that software in the stable branch is tried and tested in every other branch, all the way from experimental to unstable to testing to stable. And that's really just to ensure the utmost instability. But the end user is not limited to the software available in the standard repos with Debian 10. Uh, newer versions of most of this software is available in the backports repo. I mean, all the way down from the kernel up. So with all that said, once again, let's get into the Buster VM and get started. So here we are in our Debian 10 Buster virtual machine. I installed the KDE version because, well, why not? Because this, this is going to work in every environment that you can get in Debian. You know, like most things in Linux, there's more than one way to do this. And I'm going to show two ways to do it today. First, I'm going to edit our app-sources.list file. So if I fire up a terminal, and let's say I just cd into slash etsy and apt, you see that we have sources.list and a sources.list.d. You can actually add one or two lines to the sources.list file, or you can create a file in sources.list.d and it'll work either way. As long as the file inside sources.list.d ends in .list, so let's say you want to add backports.list in sources.list.d, that would work. But what I'm going to do is just edit the sources.list file and just put it at the bottom. So I'm going to say sudo nano slash etsy apt sources.list put in the password and we're going to come down to the bottom of the file and you see that we are running Buster and I've already got the main contrib and non-free repos uh, activated in all of these. You can do that if you want. I'm not here to judge. What we need to do here is I'm going to add a comment and we're going to say Buster backports repos and everything here it kind of gives you a template because it's, it's it's a deb or a deb source. It's going to give you the URL or URI. It's going to give you the name and what repos to use. And you can look up the address and stuff online, but I kind of just know it. So what we're going to do is we're going to say deb http colon slash slash deb dot debian dot org slash debian space buster dash backports main contrib non-free or if you didn't want to add your sources or anything to that you could be done right there but I generally add the sources so what I'm going to do here is do the same exact thing control K and then control U control U and do deb dash src and I'm done so now we can do control X yes to write it out and enter so let's clear the screen and let's go home and sudo apt update. You see that we have no errors or anything. Now the backports repository is enabled. So anyway, you have seen how to enable the backports repository in the terminal. So now let's look at 
enabling the back porch repository in Synaptic. So I'm going to go undo what I did. So let's sudo nano slash Etsy apt sources.list. I'm going to come down here and we're going to say control K, control K, control K. Control X to exit, Y, enter, sudo apt update, and we're good. So now let's say sudo apt install synaptic. Honestly, this is a really easy way to do it if you want a graphical environment to do this in. So let's let's just fire up synaptic, give it our password. And now we can just go up to our settings button and repositories. Sorry if it's kind of small. So as you can see here, you have deb and deb source, and everything is laid out just like it was in our sources.list file. So what I want to do, I want to click the new button. I'm going to, it's going to be a binary deb. That's, that's good. This is, all, is going to automatically be put here in this column. So I don't have to do deb space HTTP. It's already going to have that. So I'm going to say HTTP colon slash slash deb.debian.org slash Debian. Distribution is going to be this right here. We're going to call it buster dash backports. The sections are going to be main contrib non-free we're going to hit ok repositories change reload it didn't give us an error so it was successful so we can go back into our repositories and you can see that our back porch repositories are enabled here that's just for the deb so if you want to add deb source you can do the same thing just by clicking the drop down menu and clicking source deb src and we're going to type in the same exact thing http colon slash slash deb dot debian dot org slash debian the distribution buster dash backports main contrib non free We're going to reload that. Since everything has been reloaded, we probably don't even have to run updates, but I'm going to anyway. Everything's good. So now let's look at, let's say, our ZFS kernel modules. Because I've been getting some questions here and there about the newer version of ZFS. Say sudo apt search ZFS DKMS. We got 0.7.12. So if we say apt show zfs dash dkms dash a, you'll see we have version 0.8.5 available in the back porch repository. So let's say I wanted to do that. Or let's say I wanted to enable zfs for added storage, or if I had an array of hard drives attached to my desktop, and I wanted that to be ZFS. I've actually got a script for that. So let's say sudo apt install git. And I'm just going to git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash linux dabbler slash debian install scripts. We're going to cd into Debian install scripts and then we're going to nano 107 zfs.sh. So what we've done here is we're, we've installed the headers. We And we're not going to you know do the sim link because I wrote this back when stretch was back when stretch was stable. <laughs> so we're 
so what we're doing here is we're going to sudo apt install zfs dkms zfs utils but i'm going to change sudo apt install to sudo apt dash t buster backports install and that's going to give us the newest version of zfs dkms and zfs utils then it's going to mod probe zfs and it's going to do all of our system ctl commands to enable zfs target import cache mount import target import scan and share then it's going to restart all those services and we'll have and we'll be ready to go so control x to write it yes enter and now we're going to chmod plus x 107 zfs.sh and we can run the script this one generally takes a little bit so i'm probably just going to fast forward through it And we're and everything completed with minimal errors because this is a VM and I don't have any uh, hard drives or, or or an array or anything that is formatted for ZFS. So when it did the mod probe, it's going to try to start and stop services and all that, and I don't have anything that's formatted ZFS. And you see that we have or app search zfs dkms we have the buster backports version of it installed on debian 10. so i guess that's kind of a a secondary little how-to on how to get the newest version of zfs installed on on debian buster so let's say we wanted to install the newest version of libreoffice so let's say sudo apt dash t buster backports install LibreOffice. Oh, I already had it installed. <laughs> I had, I was playing around in this VM before. But anyway, so let's let's actually open LibreOffice. We'll go up to help about LibreOffice and you see that we are at version 7.0.3.1. Let's say we go to Google and we are going to just search for newest version of LibreOffice. We'll go to the download and it should pull up 7.0.3. So anyway, that's about all I've got for today. I just kind of wanted to show how to enable the Buster backports and be able to get newer versions of software on Debian. So let's say if you had you know you're you know a crazy person like me and was running uh debian with no desktop environment as a nas and was and had downloaded the zfs kernel modules and wanted to get the newest ones there's a way to do it or if you want or if you're a more normal person and you wanted the newest version of libreoffice or the newest version of kden live or something like that without going to a uh, an app image or a snap package or a flat pack you can just get the newer the newer version from the backports repository and if you wanted to you could pin that where it would not update past that if that version worked really really well but i will give a little bit of warning toward the end of the video if you've made it this far thank you <laughs> um if you use this a lot you're going to get some type of uh conflicts here and there possibly because using newer versions of libraries when you're expecting older versions of libraries in the standard repos there can be some conflicts down the road but if you use it sparingly and only do it for a couple of things that you really really want you'll be fine because if you just you know go all out and say, I want the backports version of everything. 
you're better off just installing Debian testing. So anyway, thank you for watching. Y'all have a nice day. Like, share, and subscribe. We sound like Debian guys with Arch Guy needs. But anyway, <laughs> that's not the point. So to, so to look at this, let's clear the screen again. I know I can use Control-L, but I've always just typed clear. I know.